Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at noon. Breaking news alert. Authorities in North Dakota are searching for a man wanted for attempted murder, and they say he is armed and dangerous. This is all connected to a drive-by shooting in Bismarck. Police are searching for 24-year-old Mason Shu. Authorities say last week, Shu was in a car with another man when they drove up to a vehicle with three people inside and started shooting. The driver was eventually arrested, but Shu is on the run. His picture is up on your screen right now. If you see him, do not approach him and call 911 right away. Authorities are not saying where they think he may be right now. We continue to follow new developments surrounding the human bones found near a Fargo park. The scene near Trollwood Park is still very active this afternoon, and the BCI is now involved. It all started overnight when people near that park found what they believed were human bones and called police. Authorities say it's likely the bones have been there for quite some time. Crime and safety reporter Bailey Hurley joins us live from the scene where authorities still have a section blocked off and are investigating. Bailey. Yeah, Jordan, still a very active scene indeed. The drones have been out here today. The cadaver dogs have been out here today. Fargo police are doing as much as they can to preserve this scene. So in the case that the Cass County Coroner's Office says that the bones indicate that some sort of foul play was involved or a further investigation is warranted, Fargo police already have their tracks covered and have as much evidence collected from here today as possible. But Fargo police do say that the bones seem like they've been here for quite some time. And Jordan, I've kind of gotten my own Fargo history lesson out here today, as I've learned that this part of Trollwood Park used to be a cemetery. And so while it is very likely that what was found out here yesterday uh, could be somebody who was buried out here very peacefully uh, several years ago, Fargo police say the problem with that is they don't really know how to identify that person or find their next of kin. There's no plot map. Uh, there's no headstones out here. There's nothing identifying who was buried where. So again, identifying that person and notifying their next of kin is going to be a, a struggle if that is the case here. Now, Fargo police say they are going to be out here for the rest of the day. New information is not going to come until later this week. Reporting live in North Fargo, Bailey Hurley, Valley News Live. All right, Bailey, thank you very much. We have new information on the coronavirus in the region. Positive cases in Minnesota surged past 4,000, and the death toll went over the 300 mark. 4,181 people have tested positive, and 301 people have now died in the state. 314 people are in the hospital. More people are also recovering, however. 1,912 people no longer need isolation. In North Dakota, 49 more people have tested positive, bringing the total to 991 cases. The death toll remains at 19. Cass County reported the most new cases today. We have all the numbers from North Dakota and Minnesota on these stories, and you'll find those on the VNL News app. Taking that live look outside on this Tuesday afternoon, kind of some clouds, some blue skies, but nicer than what some folks woke up to. It was raining for some today. For what we can expect in the rest of our forecast, let's head on over to First Alert Storm Team meteorologist Lisa Green. Good afternoon. Yes, that morning rain was the first round and that has since moved on. It's moving east through uh, eastern parts of Minnesota. We've got a break happening here for many of us in northwest Minnesota. Anywhere in this dark area, that's where we're getting some sunshine mixed in with some clouds. And then, of course, here's that next line that's been very slow to advance eastward. So if you're along that Devil's Lake area, Jamestown area, down toward Ellendale, this is where we're focused for the rain right now. We've had one lightning bolt show up with this one initially, and now it has weakened a bit as it's developed, keeping an eye on that line just west of our viewing area to see if there's going to be any more development there. But right now, just some rain at this point, heading a little farther north up to the Devil's Lake Basin, seeing that rain too. And this is all going to try to advance eastward. You could see that here's Grand Forks, that we've got a little shower uh, just in western parts of the county there. So this is going to continue to roll eastward. It's all associated with this low pressure system. You could kind of see the rotation going on with it. That's going to make its way to the east as we head into the afternoon hours. And we could see some stronger storms developing here as we head into the afternoon. So we're going to talk more about that coming up in just a few minutes and just how much rain we could expect to see with this latest round. All right. Thank you, Lisa. Vice President Mike Pence has an appointment at Minnesota's Mayo Clinic today to learn about a new coronavirus testing moonshot. The Fame Clinic is partnering with the state and the University of Minnesota to boost the state's capacity to 20,000 tests a day. 
It's an approach that leverages world-class health institutions that not all states can match. Experts say a big increase is needed to safely reopen the economy. Minnesota is one of several states that have quit waiting for federal government for any help. And today we're expecting to learn more about Governor Doug Burgum's decision to open up parts of the state by Friday. According to the governor, the state's increased testing capacity, its low positive test rate for the coronavirus, and the existing hospital bed capacity to handle patients were among the positive signs for reopening business. Burgum detailed that reopening will include bars, restaurants, health clubs, salons, and other impacted in is his executive order weeks ago. It's unclear at this point if any restrictions will be placed on those businesses. Stay with us here at Valley News Live as we follow this story. 56,000 Americans have died from the coronavirus. The number of Americans who have tested positive is nearly 1 million. Since the virus reached the U.S. in January, about 1.7 percent of the population has been tested. The Trump administration is out with a new goal, testing 2 percent each month. Ian Lee has the latest. The United States now holds the world record for testing and by a lot. President Trump touted the number of coronavirus tests completed in the U.S. 5.4 million tests more than any other country anywhere in the world. Though it's not nearly enough to fully reopen states, according to many governors. We want to reopen this state and we've got to have that testing to be able to do it. In order to uh, reopen our economy, we really need that testing. To address the shortfall, the Thank Trump administration released you. a national plan but puts much of the responsibility on individual states. Our blueprint describes how states should unlock their full capacity, expand the number of testing platforms, establish monitoring systems to detect local outbreaks, and conduct contact tracing. Under the initiative, all 50 states will receive enough tests to screen 2% of their populations every month. We will be able to supply every state with the, with the uh, supplies and the tests that they need that will dramatically increase the number of tests we've done. It comes more than seven weeks after President Trump said there was no shortage. They have the tests, and the tests are beautiful. Anybody that needs a test gets a test. Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker says more testing prevents community spread. There are lots and lots of people out there who do not know that they have coronavirus because they haven't been tested. Executives from CVS and Walgreens who met with the president yesterday said they're ramping up testing at stores around the country. Ian Lee, CBS News. Those that want the test need to book an appointment online. They also need to meet the CDC criteria, which includes having a number of symptoms. Coming up here at noon, just because you might not be able to visit mom on this Mother's Day, it doesn't mean you have an excuse to forget the gift. We take a look at alternatives to dropping off that gift in person. But next, Lisa Green is in with everything we need to know as some showers make their way into parts of the region.